So now I give the floor to uh, Mrs. Elena Contura from the European Parliament that in five minutes, uh, please, could you tell us what are the main policy mes messages from, from your organization? Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the invitation to join you about the future of the Mediterranean that concerns us all. The Mediterranean is home to some of the world's greatest natural, cultural and historical assets, and it's a precious land and marine ecosystem of indigenous species. Its rich diversity and uniqueness have established uh, the Med as one of the most attractive and most visited destinations in the world, yet is uh, the one of the areas mostly threatened and burdened by the climate crisis. It's a great challenge and an even greater responsibility to preserve this wealth uh, for the future and ensure the well-being of all Med communities before it's too late. And this only can be done if we collectively change our course and assume bold actions for sustainability with clear, ambitious targets and deadlines. To this end, I would like to congratulate all stakeholders of the MED Sustainable Tourism Community, initiators and active partners for their work and achievements through more than 30 territorial projects in all countries involved and the valuable outcome of all interreg programs. The reason update MED declaration is a call for action that we absolutely relate to and support following the milestone initiatives, including the Glasgow Declaration on Climate Change and all previous ones. The European Parliament has strongly supported the global commitment to halve emissions by 2030 and reach net zero as soon as possible before 2050, being the first institution to have declared the climate crisis uh, emergency in 2019. Ever since, we have non stopped to press for more ambitious action to achieve the global agenda, the European Green Deal, and the Fit for 55 legislation. We all know that a just transition to net zero before 2050 will only be possible if we all act together against the challenges. And certainly those challenges related to transportation and tourism, especially in this very, very difficult period. We are in the midst of uh, multiple crises, the pandemic, the impact of the war in Ukraine, uh, the rising inflation, the increasing uh, the cost of living, the acute energy crisis place serious risk for the short term, but also in the long term to deal with the climate crisis. Mistakes or wrong decisions are no longer acceptable and we cannot afford further delay. The transport sector must drastically reduce carbon emissions by 90% by 2050, and such must be the case in the case of tourism's impact on the environment. Recently, the, Euro the European Parliament adopted two critical resolutions that concern the, the whole of Europe and the Med. The first is about the AFIR uh, regulation, part of the Fit of, uh, for 55 package, and the strongest uh, legal framework we have come up with today it uh, sets legally binding minimum requirements for member states to develop the necessary alternative fuel infrastructure aiming to create a fully interconnected and interoperable uh, network across uh, Europe. Our second resolution concerns the EU rules on the use of renewable and low carbon uh, fuels in maritime transport. The whole of uh, Southern Europe and the Mediterranean Basin relies heavily on shipping and on cruise uh, activity. We called for more ambitious targets for the shipping sector to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from ships by 2% from 2025, 20% from 2035, and 80% from 2050 compared to 2020 levels. Also, regarding tourism, we have adopted a resolution asking for the first EU strategy for sustainable tourism aligned with the European Green Deal, the Digital Agenda, and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The European Commission 
responded to our call and uh, chose tourism to be the first ecosystem in the EU where a transition pathway document was drafted through consultation with all relevant stakeholders for shaping the sustainability agenda in tourism by 2030 and 2050. The tourism sector, uh, but also transportation and maritime activity need deep policy changes, investment and uh, prioritization based on sustainability, justice and quality. There are several examples of Mediterranean destinations that are already transforming. And I can speak for my country, Greece, for example, Astipale Island has shifted to immobility by switching from conventional to electric vehicles. Tilos, another island, will become the first island in the Mediterranean to be 100% energy self-sufficient using solar and wind for energy and 80% of its waste is now recycled. Paros, very famous destination aims to become the first single use plastic waste free island in the Med. And Rhodos Island is launching the Co Lab project for a holistic, sustainable transformation of the destination's tourism value for em environmental, social, and economic progress. Yet, we need more aligned efforts, policies, and practices that will uh, benefit all. This is why at the European Parliament, we ask member states to devise national plans for sustainable tourism development with funding from the next generation EU program. And even more, we called for holistic approaches on achieving climate neutrality in the whole uh, tourism value chain. This means that all stakeholders in each destination will engage to transform to green infrastructures such as airports and ports to apply circular uh, economy in the whole system in tourism activity, reducing sharply waste and food waste. It also means that we need green and affordable for all transportation as well as skill development and training to support sustainable jobs and the workforce throughout between green and digital transition. Insularity is another critical issue for the MED area that should be addressed effectively through support policies, connectivity and mobility in islands and remote regions whose need have been largely overlooked uh, or bypassed in the past. Most of the islands face enormous transport cost and the cost of living is sharply uh, increasing. So if the transition to sustainability is not entirely fair, uh, covering the needs all groups of citizens and for all regions, a large part of the human capital entrepreneurships and jobs in Europe is risk of being lost threatening social cohesion as well. This is why one of my main proposals adopted in several resolutions has been the need to create a European crisis management mechanism so that collective response will be mobilized against all sorts of crises and especially for the climate crisis. And we also uh, strive for uh, the establishment of an EU agency dedicated to supporting tourism and its pathway to sustainability. Only if we are all together, we can make the big steps needed. And in this race, I can assure you that from my current position, I would further support efforts and decisions leading to a more sustainable future in tourism for all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elena Conturas. Uh, we really appreciate your concrete um, messages and initiatives from, from the European Parliament.